Today I'm working on um, painting a Suffolk Punch's mane and tail. Um, this part of the braid isn't actually the mane. This is a raffia ribbon that's braided into the mane. The mane's pulled in and then um, these uh, rosettes will go down into here like that. The mane and tail I painted um, white to begin with, and I've added a little bit of a blonde streak. Let's see if that shows up. And you can see a little bit of the blonde streaking I've just started adding. <clears throat> and the reference photo that I showed earlier has a lovely suffix with multicolored mane. It's darker in the front, has a space of sort of a cream color, and then it goes like a reddish blonde. Um, the tail on this is braided, and you'll see we'll be able to create sort of lines that look like hair that comes in. Um, my first mixture of color, I'm going to start with airbrush on this, and my first mix of color now is um, Burnt Sienna, and uh, let's see, what did I put in that? Raw Umber. So that's this. And this. I like the Com Art paints because um, they're really super finely ground so you don't get a gritty texture. And they dry nice and the colors are museum quality. They're considered archival. So what I'm going to do is start on the main side and just start building streaks of color start on the crest side, I should have said. And I like to work um, on this from light to dark. What I'll do is gradually increase the darkness in certain areas, and um, you want to leave white also. Um, that'll leave some place to build some gray and plus more areas of interest. Since the tail is pulled together from underneath, you want to follow the way the hairs would go. You can see how they're sculpted in. So you want to follow that the pattern and it'll build up, the layers build up and it makes it look like actual hair. Now the parts that are braided, um, what I'm doing is just coloring certain areas of the braid. Um, because the multi-layers of the hair color um, will create different areas of interest in a braided tail. You'll have like lighter sections and darker, darker sections. Okay, so so far we have just burnt sienna and blonde, and I'm going to add a little bit of burnt umber and start creating some darker areas. I have to shake up my paint, and we're going to use, this is Comart Burnt Umber. And I'm just going to add a few drops of it to the airbrush once I get it shaken up. I just add it right into the upper cup. And I love these clay shapers. I just use that to mix the color right in. It's not very dark, so I'm gonna spray some of this sienna out. And add a little bit more paint of the burnt sienna. see that but we're getting a nice rich dark brown there. I don't want to go too dark right away. I like to build up thin layers. We'll test it over here on I have like this big piece of paper hung up on an easel behind me. Okay we'll see what that looks like. Well, that's nice. It's a nice neutral color. It's um 
a little more brown. I want to leave this area lighter, so I'm going to skip ahead to this part of the mane. I'm getting just a little bit of overspray onto this main roll, and I don't I don't want that, so I'm going to just take a Q-tip and clean this off. Um, this was painted ahead of time. I did it into this sort of a raffia light tan color, and then this was all spray sealed with um, dust, uh, Tester's doll coat. So that way if I do get overspray, I can just take a little Q-tip and clean it off. Now I can't forget to do our forelock. I almost forgot about that. I'll come up here and just build some streaks of color. The forelock on the horse that I'm using for a reference is fairly dark. It's like a brownish gray color, so. I'm going to leave just a little bit of lightness on the tips for some variation, which my reference photo does not have. And it has a real pretty blonde tail. Um, I'd shown this picture in the beginning of the video so you know kind of what we're shooting for. And I like to say uh, what we're shooting for because a lot of times as you're painting, it sounds like Bob Ross, but you have happy accidents. You'll be working along and you have an idea and as you're painting, all of a sudden the paint takes a life of its own and you start seeing things that you couldn't have possibly known would happen until you started painting. And so, you know, you can fight it and stick to your original plan, and sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. Or you can kind of just go with it. And that's when you have these happy accidents, you have these colors that just work because the paint will do what it's going to do. Getting a little overspray on the edges of my braid here, and I don't want that. I want to keep that nice and clean. I'm using a um, angle shader for this. It gets in nice and tight. This is a Robert Simmons eighth inch angle shader. And I just wet it with a little bit of water and then clean off the overspray. You want to clean that off as soon as possible because if it has a minute or so to set up, then it gets difficult to clean off. I'll go back to building my darker colors in the front. Right now the mane just looks kind of like a blah shade of brownish gray. But that's okay. We're going to leave some white areas, we're going to leave some darker areas, and just keep building up the color. So we'll have a little blonde show through, and we'll have some red show through, and you want to make sure you don't cover up everything that you've done in the previous layer. Leave a little bit of it show through. And I'm working with, um, an Iwata CMB. Um, it's a gravity feed airbrush. I work with the tip off of the needle, the cap. Um, it gives me a little finer control and I'm not sure if you can see this but the uh, paint's starting to build up on the tip of the needle a little bit. So next to me I have a tiny cup with some water and a few drops of Windex in it and I dip a Q-tip in there, 
and whenever I see paint build up on the needle I clean it off and then I pull the needle back into the airbrush and see that the paint wicks onto the q-tip that way I know I'll have a nice clean flow now once you clean your needle make sure that you spray it behind you before you spray the horse because there might be a few little drops of paint on there that'll come through and make a nice mess for you. We don't want that. So you start the flow before you pull the needle back. Start the airflow and then pull the needle back. Start the airflow and pull the needle back. And I'm only moving the needle about maybe an eighth of an inch. But you want to start the airflow before the paint, and then that way you don't get spatters. Okay, go up here and build up the darker areas a little bit more. And you want to work over the whole piece, not just one area. Just keep building the thin layers. You can kind of see how that's starting to build up some layers of color. And we'll work on this part of the tail. But you have to actually get up underneath of the tail on this guy. I mean, he sculpted all the way around. So you have to get up underneath. And that's one of the wonderful things about an airbrush is you can reach up in the areas that you just can't get to with a paintbrush. Um, I mean, maybe you can with a paintbrush, but when it's loaded with paint, you end up with paint on everything else. And so, this type of airbrush is so refined, you can paint hair fine lines. And you can really direct it into small areas. So the control is wonderful. Um, one of the things I do... This is called Retarder, and it's a clear thickening agent, and it also slows how fast your paint dries. And I add a drop or two of it to the paint, because Comart tends to be really, really thin. It's a super fine ground, and it's put into a thin, thin medium, specifically designed to spray through an airbrush. But when you get real close on a surface like we do with a... Uh, model horses that are non-absorbent like a piece of paper would be um, the paint tends to spider it and what I mean by that is when you get real close it'll make like a round spot and then little globs of paint fly out from the round spot because it's not adhering so what the retarder does is it makes the paint just a little bit thicker um, and it allows you to get and do these hair fine lines on a non-absorbent surface. Um, it also allows you to spray at higher pressures and that'll give you just super super fine detail. See the little fine hair lines? I mean it's just amazing. I laid just a little bit of color into this lighter area, but I'm going to continue to build up these darker areas. I know this kind of takes a while, and you can get a little impatient if you're wanting to see your color done right away, but it's worth it. Don't forget to work on the little braid. It gives you continuity. Keep building up your layers of color. Uh, this sculpture is called Woodbridge, by the way. Um, he was sculpted by Sherry Rhodes, and 
gosh, I mean, she did just a fantastic job with him. Every detail. The way the tails are braided specifically for show. This is a Suffolk Punch breed. Um, the whole breed comes in chestnut. You're allowed dark chestnut, light chestnut. They don't like white legs. Um, this piece here is painted white because I got a fingerprint on it and have to redo it. So, But this leg will be a light chestnut later too. So we'll go back to working on this. Building up these darker colors. The reference photo, the main is like a little bit lighter at the bottom. It gets lighter here and then it gets really dark up in the neck. It's like a almost a blue-gray color. So I'm going to concentrate on that for a while. Make sure you get your color all the way on both sides of the neck. See where I've missed it a little bit here, so I need to carry my color over. And if you do get some overspray, again, you can just take a damp Q-tip and clean that off. You can see when I painted this white how I left a little edge that looks just like hair grows out of the neck on a real mane. Maybe if I show it right side up, that would be better, huh? Carry the color down into the forelock. Back to the tail. Looking at my reference photo. Okay. Okay, I'm going to add a little um, black to this, and remember again, our mixture is Burnt Sienna, Calm Art, um, Burnt Umber, Calm Art, and now I'm adding Badger Black. Not much to see, I don't have a label on this bottle, but... Here's how it is. And I love these tops on these bottles. You just twist it open. You can use one hand and you can add a drop. Or with the black, it's so concentrated. I put it on a palette next to me and then just pick up a little bit of it on this clay shaper and add it right into the cup and mix it. And now it's about the color of Hershey syrup. It's a really gorgeous dark rich rich brown so I want to start it in my darkest area first if it's too dark then I can lift it off pretty easily or blend it in the darker area you know what see I've got so much paint built up on the end of my needle here that no paints coming out of the airbrush so I need to clean that off 